Hey guys, welcome back. Aaron with Tier 1 Concealed, and today we are going to be talking about pistol mounted red dots and how to go about zeroing them. And today we will be using our 3.7s challenge drill target that you can print out on our website. And you can give this a shot yourself. It's shot from seven yards and you can see all the instructions on the website and on the printout itself. And if you are able to shoot it clean within time and document it, we will send you a challenge coin. At the time of filming this video, I believe only 76 or 77 people have shot that uh, clean and been able to document it. So there are quite a few challenge coins out there around. We still have some more to award, so go check that out and give it a shot. So the first thing we want to talk about when going over pistol mounted red dots and how to zero them and making sure you have a good true zero is first making sure that you have a good red dot mounted securely to your slide. And we always suggest that you get a specific slide cut to the red dot that you will be using that eliminates a lot of variables and will allow for the best outcomes and success when getting a good fit and a secure red dot that's not going to be moving around or coming loose. You also want to make sure that when you screw in, use the screws to mount it, that you're tightening them to spec and you'll want to make sure that you're using some type of thread locker to make sure that those screws stay in place and they don't come loose and that they hold your red dot on there securely. And once you make sure that everything is good and locked down on that red dot, it's always a good idea to use a paint pen or a Sharpie or something like that to make some witness marks on the screws themselves so that you can quickly reference every day, every time you shoot, that those are still tight and locked down and that nothing's backed off. Because even if those screws back off a little bit, sometimes it can throw off your zero. And if you don't notice that and you don't have any witness marks, over time those might even uh, back out all the way you could lose a screw and you can lose a dot dot might even fly off while you're shooting it and hit you in the forehead so okay another thing we want to talk about is how to start out zeroing your red dot and how to go about doing that so on most of your pistols you will have backup iron sights and a lot of times if they're tall enough or if your optic sits low enough they will co-witness with the red dot itself so what does that mean if you look down the slide through your iron sights and you can see them both of them the rear and the front through the optic that means they co-witness so you can start out by moving the reticle in your red dot sight to line up with those iron sights. And that will be a good starting place for when you go out to shoot. So you don't even need to do that at the range. You can do that at home. Just make sure your gun's clear and everybody's being safe. And that should get you on paper, should get you pretty close, but that's not always going to be a perfect good zero. But that's, that's it. that is a good starting point. Another topic we want to cover is distances to zero your pistol at and what distance should you zero at it? And if there is a best distance to zero, who knows? We don't know, we don't have all the answers, but we'll go over a couple of the distances that we personally like to use, and we might even go out to 25 yards and see how our zeros hold up on a couple small targets, maybe the three inch like that. And the last thing that I wanna go over is the method in which you shoot to zero your red dot. A lot of people will stand freehand unsupported and shoot just and try to zero their red dot just as they're shooting normally, but some people will like to use some sort of rest to try to eliminate other variables such as using a table or a bench or a sandbag or tripod or something like that. So we will check out both of those methods as well. Okay, and the last thing that I want to go over is how do you adjust the reticle um, and how do you dial that to zero it. I'm talking about windage and elevation and it's going to be very similar to a rifle. If you've ever tried to zero a red dot or even a scope on a rifle, it'll be very similar. So you will notice on your red dots that you have a top turret and a side turret, just like you would in the other site. And that will usually have a letter and an arrow for a direction to dial that. So the top one's going to be elevation and the side one's going to be windage. So once you start shooting, you will re reference your point of impact. So where the bullet is actually hitting on the target. So you need to be aiming at the bullseye or whatever you wanna shoot. And wherever you are impacting, that is the direction you will use on these turrets to dial. 
Most modern red dots aren't going to be moving the reticle itself inside the window in the direction that it's saying. It'll be referencing the point of impact. So to me, I think that's very intuitive. So if I know I'm hitting left, I'll just look at the dial and whichever direction it says right, I need to know that I need to dial it to the right because I need to bring my impact to the right. Hope that makes sense. And it's the same thing with elevation. So if I'm hitting low, I'll just look there and find the U for up and I'll just dial it in that direction because I need to go up. I got Sawyer with me today and I believe he likes to zero his pistols at 10 yards. And so let's go check him out and see how he likes to go about doing that. All right, so like Aaron said, I prefer to have a, a 10 yard zero and that comes from just a lot of trial and error, which before I get into anything I want you guys to do, don't take any of our word for it. Like when we talk about zeroing distances and point of impacts and stuff, we are trying to give you the best information, but it's extremely important that you guys go out and confirm and do it and train. So if we're talking about zeros and zeroing distances, go and experiment like I did. You may come to different conclusions, but it's probably because it works better for you. But anyway, yeah, I do like a 10 yard zero just because I've tried the seven, I've tried closer, I've tried like a 15, I've tried having like a dedicated 25 yard zero. And what 10 yards does for me is gives me just like the best kind of minute of man impacts throughout those distances. I feel like I'm not gonna be taking any shots past 25 yards. I can make effective hits at 50 with this zero, but like I said, minute of man, I just wanna have very acceptable hits in like an A zone. And with a 10 yard zero, I can do that with minimal elevation shifts. I'd say from, <clears throat> I, I think inside five yards is negligible, but like starting at seven, I don't see a point of impact shift at 10, I'm dead on. At 15, I can't really shoot to the difference, and that's another thing we wanted to cover. Lots of people will debate to the grave their zeroing distance, but the fact is 99% of people can't shoot the difference. So like, if I handed someone a pistol with a 10 yard zero and said shoot it at 25, they couldn't be like, oh, this is a 10 yard zero. I'm hitting three quarters of an inch high, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so like at, at 25 yards, I'm just getting those acceptable minute of man impacts in the A zone. And what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna shoot just a little confirmation group. It's important to confirm your zero. Red dots are extremely reliable these days. I've, oftentimes I've seen more iron sights fail than red dots, but it's all, always good to confirm your zero. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna shoot a little five shot group on a one inch circle. Get my mag out here. Did I shoot six again? <laughs> yeah, I shot six. You can see my target little over here, over here, wherever we put it. <laughs> but I threw my first shot, that happens. You're not, nobody's perfect. But then I managed just to kind of keep them all around in the one inch dot. I think that's very acceptable considering like the A zone. It's a group like that and a square like that. And you obviously want to keep them in the incapacitating areas, head or chest. So I'll take that group all day. I'm not gonna adjust my zero. I threw one a little right, I threw one a little high. That was me. So that's another thing that's extremely important to remember. Shoot more than one group and don't go chasing the zero, kind of follow your, your averages. Because if you, if you throw one really high, shoot another one to confirm because it's very possible that it was you that pulled that shot. As with zeroing anything, you wanna find the pattern and then zero to the pattern rather than being like the one shot that was high or left. You don't wanna chase the zero like that. So another thing I wanted to cover was there's a lot of people that will say they like to zero rested. They'll still like have a bag or off of a table or a bench rest or stuff like that. And there's other people like me that want, that will zero just freehand. And there's a couple reasons for that. <laughs> so the main difference between the two zeroing methods for me is the musculature, that the muscles that are being employed during the shooting process. So obviously when you're when you're resting on a bag or a bench, your arms are gonna be a little bit more relaxed. You're focusing a lot more on your trigger press and you're probably not trying to control the recoil as much and the sight picture is gonna be a little bit different because you're, you're kind of having to compromise your stance and stuff. So basically my reasoning behind it is I want to zero how the gun is going to be employed if I have to use it. So I'm just gonna zero 
freehand how I'm going to shoot the whole time because there's, like I said, there's a lot more muscles coming into play than if it's being rested or freehand. I don't want to have anything affect my grip, my trigger control, or my trigger press, the sight picture, or the recoil control. So I'm just gonna cut that little step out. You can still get a really good zero freehand. You just have to take a little bit more time, focus on your trigger press, but I'm not negating either one. I know a lot of people who are extremely good shooters like Donovan Moore likes to shoot off of a bag when he zeroes and he can shoot circles around me. So that's just my preference. But like I said before, the big thing is don't take our word for it. Go out, try it, experiment with it and find what works best for you. Okay, so I moved up to seven yards and I'm going to confirm my zero on my pistol at seven yards. And like Sawyer mentioned, there's not gonna be a whole lot of difference between 10 and seven yards. Um, and I'm actually going to try to use this tripod and a bag to zero. I'm going to be shooting at the top target on the right one inch circle. So uh, one of the reasons I like to um, zero from seven yards is I'm not a very good shooter and I need all the advantage I can get. So um, you should be able to get a pretty tight group at seven yards and even, even a seven yard zero, the cone of deviation out at 25, like Sawyer said, isn't going to be that big. So um, I'm gonna try this out. Usually I don't uh, rest on anything. I, I usually just shoot like Sawyer does, mostly because it's less setup and takes less time and I'm super lazy. So, but we'll try it this time just for entertainment value. Okay, so let's see how, see how it goes. I'll do a five shot group and just to clarify, we are shooting a uh, cheap range practice ammo, 115 grain full metal jacket. So nothing super match grade or anything. So there's, there's always gonna be variables. So just keep that in mind. Maybe a little bit later, uh, I'll uh, confirm zero with the, my duty ammo that I carry, which is federal HST 124 grain, but we'll get to that later. So top target, um, bottom right one inch circle. And another pro tip when zeroing is dot size. I prefer a small dot, one MOA if possible, but it's, it, I mean, it's up to you. And when I, when I zero, I, I dim that dot a little bit so that it become, it's become smaller and there's not so much bloom, you know, on the glass there. So just helps, helps you get a little bit more precise. So here we go. And this tripod could be a little bit taller, but. Okay, so. That's a pretty good freaking group, I must say. Um, those were all pretty much touching just kind of on the right side of the one inch circle. So, I mean, that's good for me. If I did anything, I just bring it left, maybe one or two clicks. But I mean, at seven yards, I think that's super acceptable. You know, I doubt I'll notice any difference going out to 10. I, I think that was consistent enough. Okay, so I was shooting and hitting point of impact was just on the right line of the uh, one inch circle. So I dialed three clicks to the left. So I'm gonna reconfirm. And this time I'm going to be shooting on the bottom target, but the top left one inch circle. So I'll do another five shot group there and see how this goes. Okay, so for me, I think that that did it. Three clicks was probably a good call. I had one on the right side, but I mean, they're all in the one inch circle. So that's, that's a great five shot group for me. Uh, seven yard zero is good and confirmed with this. This is a short, tiny little gun too. So I'm impressed with that. This is the uh, P365XL done up by Zevtech. So 
Um, and I'm shooting the uh, Hollow Sun 507K X2 sight. So that's an awesome little sight for small pistols, just FYI. Sawyer and I, we have our zeros pretty much dialed in to where we want them. So Sawyer was at 10 yards, I was at seven. Let's head back to 25 yards and see if we can notice any, any uh, significant deviation or point of impact shift. Um, we'll be shooting at the three inch circles. So maybe Sawyer will take the top target three inch circle and I'll take the bottom target three inch circle. And we'll just do a, a quick five shot group. So I have all the, uh, all the all the hits marked with a sharpie there so hopefully we'll be able to see those so let's head back okay came back to 25 yards from here that looks like a very small target yeah three inch circles is a small target hopefully no one will ever need to make a three inch shot from 25 yards with a pistol under stress because that would be pretty difficult but all right you send five shots to the top top three inch circle all right. Okay, I saw some of those. I think you had three in the circle and maybe two just low, but we'll go check it out. Looked, I mean, looked pretty decent to me. I'm gonna go get some paint chip repair for my forerunner now. <laughs> All right, your turn. RIP. Okay. Um, actually, I'm gonna run down though, down there and mark those okay. so I don't get confused. Here, I'll run and mark them. So you here, here, here. Here. You need something to mark with. Okay, so my turn. Going for the bottom target three inch circle. I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea where those those There's landed. There's one in, okay. right at about 10 o'clock. Maybe I was trending high the whole time. Let's go down and check out our hits. Okay, so we can see our hits. You probably saw them in the video, but I had one a little high right, one in the circle, and then three high left. So, I mean, overall that... Well, that's probably a almost six inch spread from Farthest to farthest. Yeah, yeah, not not super great, but um, again, this small little gun and 25 yards. So uh, mm -hmm. take that for what it's worth. And I mean, if I were out there trying to uh, zero it, going off these hits, I'd be out there all day chasing that zero because you know there's a, a decent amount of deviation there. But you know, small little gun, nine mil. That's that's okay. Um, you know, you might be able to keep that in the A zone, aiming at a, at a bigger target, which is typically a good, you know, a good target to aim at. So my group was, was decent. I'm shooting a Glock 45 with an SRO. So like I said before, when I was talking about how I zero, as long as I can keep kind of that minute of man measurement, where basically if I can keep it in the A zone, for whatever distance, like if I could shoot at 100 yards and keep them all in the A zone, I think that's phenomenal. So yeah. as long as I'm making good incapacitating hits, and if you, so I had my lowest one and my highest one, then I managed to put three in the circle. So it's probably six inches with the majority of them in there. You put that on the A zone, I think yeah. that's that's pretty good. And four of them still were pretty tight. You know, if yeah. this were a four inch circle, th these four would have been in, you know. So maybe this one, you just yanked it. Who knows? Um, but but consistency. So that, that was that was good. So I think our zeros are pretty dialed in. One thing I want to I want to mention at this distance, like another reason why 25 zero, 25 yard zero isn't the best in my opinion, is at this distance your natural tremor 
is like your dots looking like this. If you had like a laser coming out of your barrel and you had someone down here watching, it would look like this. So yeah. like, it's, it's kind of lucky. And if you get a good trigger press, you trust that natural tremor and you're breathing and stuff like that, you can group them pretty good once you practice a lot. But you could also, you throw one and then if you're chasing the zero, like we said before, you're gonna be making all these adjustments and you're gonna be all over the place for hours, so. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, just just for fun, uh, we'll do a quick little little uh, group. I'll throw in some defensive ammo and I'll shoot uh, this last one inch circle uh, with the defensive ammo, which is a different weight bullet, a different load, hollow point, you know. So see if there's any difference at seven yards. I doubt there will be much, but just for you that might be wondering, um, here it is. Okay, so I got uh, five rounds loaded up of Federal HST 124 grain hollow points. This is my uh, preferred carry ammo. So um, I will be aiming at the, ver at the very bottom right one inch circle. So on the bottom target, bottom right. Once again at seven yards, doing the same tripod rest, if you will. Okay, so I think I managed to keep them all in the circle there. Uh, another pretty good group. Uh, even the different uh, grain weight of the, the round and the, the load and everything. They were trending a little bit high and maybe even a little bit, uh, little bit left, but I mean, they're still in that one inch circle. So I probably shooting, you know, freehand at 25 yards wouldn't even be able to tell what I was shooting if I, you know, what round I was shooting. There's probably so little deviation there. So uh, for what it's worth, not much of a difference uh, shooting this short um, P365 XL barrel and uh, my defense ammo and range ammo. So, so there you have it. Once again, guys, we appreciate you watching. We hope you found this video helpful. We've, we've gotten a lot of requests for this video on how to uh, zero your red dot and the different distances we like to zero. Uh, typically us, here at tier one concealed, it's, it's gonna be seven to 10 yards. I don't think there's a reason to go out past 10, but you do you, go try this out. And remember to make sure your optics on there good and tight. Try some of these methods out. Let us know in the comments what you wanna see next, if this worked for you and if you found this helpful. Once again, like, subscribe, share this video with your friends, carry our holsters and stay strapped and we will catch you next time.